Hey everybody, Historical Selfie here, and I've just arrived here at the Putnam History Museum because I found out that they have a American Revolution history crawl. So this seems right up our alley here at Historical Selfie. And what we're gonna do today is we're going to embark on this quest and see if we can go to all the sites that's listed in the pamphlet. So come join me as we live history. This booklet provides background information for each site, as well as an exact GPS address to help you find your way. All right, so I'm at the first stop of Little Stony Point here on the American Revolution Putnam County Crawl. And if you look behind me, you see the Hudson River. So this is the reason why uh, the Highlands were so important to try to block the British from coming up the river from New York City. So Washington knew that this was a strategic location and he was willing to put a lot of resources and soldiers into defending the Hudson Highlands. So if you look off in the distance where I'm pointing here, there's a small island that today is known as Bannerman's Castle and Bannerman's Island. But back in the American Revolution, it was a Dutch word called Polapel Island. So Washington would have the island surrounded with these long spikes, about 30 feet long with iron. And they were known as a French word called Chevreau de Frise. Chevreau de Frise. Thanks, YouTube. And these were to deter the British from advancing. So this is a great place to start your American Revolution history crawl with the scenic Hudson Valley. You have Storm King Mountain behind me here which was the birthplace of the environmental revolution. And you have the majestic Hudson. So on to the next stop where we get to see Constitution Island. This booklet is part of museum's Rev War 250 project. So I'm here at Foundry Dock Park in Cold Spring. And behind me is Constitution Island. So there's limited access to Constitution Island. Last summer, I was able to get onto the island, so I'll add some footage of me on the island as well. Uh, but for the history crawl, this is as close as we can get. On the other side of the Hudson is West Point. Today, it's the United States Military Academy. But during the American Revolution, this was Fortress West Point, which purpose was to defend the Hudson Highlands from the British advancing. And at the heart of the defenses was a chain an iron chain was placed across from Constitution Island connecting to West Point that would make it very difficult for the British to come up and take the Highlands. Washington hired Polish military engineer Thaddeus Kosciuszko to design the West Point fortifications. This great chain was the second chain placed across the Hudson earlier in 1777, a chain was placed across where the Bear Mountain Bridge is today, and that was connecting the Hudson to Fort Montgomery. And the British did have a fight there, and they were able to take Fort Montgomery. Uh, so there's a state park there. It's definitely worth checking out. So that's the closest battle that took place uh, in the Hudson Valley in this area. No. Although the Battle of Fort Montgomery and Fort Clinton was a defeat for the Patriots, it did serve as a delaying action, and that will enable us to win at the Battle of Saratoga. Also, lessons were learned. So when we created Fortress West Point, Washington took those lessons from the defeat at Fort Clinton and Montgomery and used it to make an impenetrable fort of called Fortress West Point. So I'm here at the North Readout Trail. So give yourself about two hours, but it's definitely worth it as we walk in the footsteps of the Continental Soldiers. Readouts were used as watch posts to guard against overland attacks on the Great Chain. Archeological studies have also given us a glimpse of the soldiers' lives at this location. So 
So I'm here at the South Readout, and this is part of Fortress West Point. So Continental soldiers were stationed here as a strategic location to look out for the possibility of an enemy attack and then report to the main force at West Point. So from this strategic location, a Continental soldier could look south down the river to see perhaps the enemy approaching from New York City. They could look across behind me to the east where the enemy might approaching from Connecticut. And also they could relay messages to West Point across the river. Uh, so cannons were brought up here as well. So imagine the toil and struggle it would take to go up and down these paths with cannons and supplies. But this is all part of keeping this area safe and secure. So it's right here where Continental soldiers created these earthworks and moved the dirt and rocks to create these structures that are still in place 250 years later. So it's an impressive effort and just shows the sacrifice and commitment they had to creating this country. So during the American Revolution, none of these trees would have been here. They all would have been cleared so we can get an unobstructed view of the surrounding area and be on the lookout for potential attacks. So here I am at the North Readout and it's on this very spot where George Washington was back on September 25th, 1780 when he was inspecting the North and South readouts. And meanwhile, back at the Beverly Robinson house, he was being betrayed by his most loyal lieutenant. So let's go find out what happened. Right behind me is where uh, there used to be a blue sign that said this was the Robinson House. Uh, now, this is not the actual Robinson House that was burnt down, uh, but um, this is the approximate location of the Robinson House, which was Benedict Arnold's headquarters during the time of the American Revolution. And it's here where he found out that Major Andre had been captured and he has to make a quick run for it. So he's gonna leave this area and head towards the river to escape and to become a infamous traitor. So let's go on the trail and find out. So there was a blue sign that said Arnold's flight. So it looks like it's in the shop getting repaired. So hopefully we'll be back soon so everyone can see it. Uh, but essentially this is where he's going to leave and then head down this trail right here. All right, maybe it's Arnold. Let's go get him. So as I follow the trail, I wonder what Arnold was thinking. Did he regret perhaps the choices that he made? And knowing that he's never gonna be fully trusted by the British and he's going to be despised by Americans. Okay, along the path, you'll notice that the Putnam History Museum placed a nice marker that gives you some information. The very same path that Benedict Arnold took as he left the Beverly Robinson house and he fled to get to the British. So he leaves behind his wife and child and he's one step ahead of Washington from getting caught. Well, it appears we've reached the end of the Arnold flight trail because if you look down, there's train tracks and the MTA, once they took this over, kind of cut off access to get to the Robinson landing, which is over on that side and that's where Arnold will board the Vulture. So uh, that's it for this part, and you can keep going down a little farther and get access to the water um, down by Arden Point. So it's a nice, pretty place to check out. Uh, give yourself half hour to an hour to explore 
uh, the grounds around here. So it's right here along the shores of the Hudson is where one of the most infamous deeds in all of American history took place, right here in this little county of Putnam County. So I guess you never know who you can really trust. That's not that uplifting. Wah, wah, wah. All right, so that's enough for the Hudson River. I better get out of here before I start thinking about becoming a British reenactor. All right, on to Continental Village. Okay, I'm here at Continental Village, and this was where Continental soldiers were housed during the American Revolution, and barracks were set up here. So not much is left around this area, but it's still interesting to kind of stop and read the signs and check out where these soldiers served. All right, the next stop is gonna be the Old Albany Post Road, which dates back to the Native Americans and is one of the, considered one of the oldest roads in America. So right off Albany Post Road, look for Canopus Hill Road, and this will take you to the sign for the Hampshire Huts. Continental soldiers were encamped here, and they also, this serves as an inoculation site as well. So right here, there's a marker for where the smallpox inoculations took place. So smallpox was the dreaded disease of the 18th century and disease would have killed more men than battle. So it was vital for George Washington to have his troops inoculated. So soldiers that were stationed in content of the village will be brought here to this barn to be given a live vaccine of smallpox. And then they'd be given about a two week recovery time before they would be sent back. Once you were inoculated and survived, then you would be immune for life from smallpox. So it was a gamble that Washington felt was necessary to take in order to have his troops ready for battle and fit to serve. So the smallpox inoculations were pioneered right here in Putnam County. So another often overlooked aspect of this war Along the old Albany Post Road, you'll notice these mile markers. So here I am at mile marker 57. So that means I'm 57 miles north of New York City. And these were put in because of Ben Franklin. So when Ben Franklin was postmaster general under the British colony, he thought to put these in. So Ben Franklin, his ideas live on. It's all about productivity and clarity. So these mile markers would have been helpful for travelers to know where they are and where they were going. So along the old Albany Post Road, there's a marker here that gives you a brief history of the site and a nice place to take a selfie. All right, let's keep going. So the history crawl will take you to the Albany Post Road, and this is the Bird and Bottle Restaurant, which was a tavern back during the American Revolution. So uh, people like Washington and Hamilton would have visited here. So our next stop on the crawl is the Patterson Town Park, and this is 34 minutes from Albany Post Road. So this is gonna be their longest driving time on the trail.
All right, so here's another bonus site for you. So this is in Kent, New York, right off of Route 52, over by Gabby's Pizza. And this is the site of the Ludington Mill. So Henry Ludington, who we're headed to his grave site, uh, and his oldest daughter, Sybil. This is where the mill was that Ludington built in 1776. So Henry Ludington was the colonel of the 7th Duchess Militia and his job was to protect the area. Uh, and when he wasn't serving as a soldier, he was here at the mill. So citizens living in this area in 1776 had a choice to make. Do they stay loyal to the king or do they join the patriots and fight for their freedom? In the Hudson Valley, many could describe the American Revolution as a civil war where Americans fought Americans. Thanks for allowing me that quick detour. So we're back on the trail and we're gonna be headed towards the Ludington grave site, which is in Patterson, New York. So I'm at the grave site of Putnam County's probably most famous resident and that's Sybil Ludington. So she's remembered nearly 250 years later for what she did that amazing night of April 26th, 1777, where she rode approximately 40 miles to warn the militia about the British were burning Danbury and potentially coming this way. Henry Ludington was a colonel in the Patriot Militia and he served as the colonel of the 7th Duchess Militia, and his job was to defend the Hudson Highlands. Also, he had to be on the lookout for bandits, such as cowboys and skinners, who were roaming the area. And this is a very dangerous area, so it was up to Ludington to maintain order. And he relied on his oldest daughter, Sybil, to deliver the message when Danbury had burnt down and then it was up to Sybil to round up her father's militia. So I'm here at the Patterson Veterans Memorial Park, but I'm not here for a Little League game. I'm here to check out history. So it's behind me where the Continental Army had their encampment in a place called Fredericksburg. So this area of Patterson, Kent, and Carmel is all known as Fredericksburg. George Washington and the Continental Army called this home. Women were also part of the camp. They often followed the enlisted husbands to the army camps and made money by laundering and repairing the soldiers' clothes, cooking food, and nursing the soldiers back to health. Washington found them to be, quote, a clog upon every movement, especially women who were pregnant or came to the camp with children in tow. Nevertheless, they were an invaluable part of the camp's ecosystem. So just beyond these ducks in this pond, to the hill on the west here, was the encampment of the Continental Army. And this provided an excellent location for an encampment. The town of Fredericksburg had excellent roads that could take you to the Hudson Highlands, and it could also take you to Connecticut. So for Washington, mobilization was the key, and he needed to move his army quickly. And the roads around here provided that opportunity. Little did he know that Washington's army was also right here in Fredericksburg. So I'm here at Tones Pond in Brewster, and it's named after an American Revolutionary soldier named Tone, who settled here after the war. Recent research points to the fact that Tone was in fact Anthony Waring, an enslaved man who fought for the freedom of his country, who ultimately obtained his own freedom, and whose American Revolution pension enabled his family to be some of the earliest black owners of land in the town of Southeast. In the bicentennial celebration of the American Revolution, the role of black Americans was often overlooked in the celebrations. So for the 250th celebration, we wanna make sure the contributions 
of all are remembered. And what better place than coming here to Tones Pond. So from here, we head to our final stop in Carmel, where we go to Enoch Crosby's grave. So it's the last stop in the American Revolutionary Crawl. So we're here at the gravesite of Enoch Crosby. And in 1914, they put up a very impressive monument to Crosby. They understood his sacrifice and courage and showing how ordinary Americans are capable of doing extraordinary. Crosby was willing to do the most dangerous job of collecting intelligence, and he was willing to pretend to be a loyalist, get information, and then return that information to the Patriots. Very few of the Patriots knew his actual identity, so he had to meet with Henry Ludington and John Jay, who would, he would relay the information to. But to the majority of the people in this area, he was known as a loyalist, so he had to live this secret life. So I conclude this American Revolution history crawl in a very peaceful and tranquil setting here in the cemetery. And it gives us pause to think of the sacrifice of Americans that lived in this area that stepped up to help the country. Okay, so thanks for sticking it out there. So we visited 10 sites and you had two bonus sites as well. So I learned something new on these trips and hopefully you did too. By visiting these sites, we get to preserve their memory and also think about our role in United States history today. So let me know in the comments below what sites that you think were most interesting and perhaps sites in Putnam County that didn't make the list that should be. So thanks again to the Putnam History Museum for providing such an amazing pamphlet to help guide me around Putnam County without getting lost. So bye for now and keep living history.